Should you use Trello or GitLab for backlog management? Hi, hi, my name is John Behrens and I'm an Agile coach and I'll coach organizations as well as persons so you can get a personal coaching with me. And today I will focus on Trello versus GitLab to help you finding the right tool for backlog management. And of course, there are a lot of more tools than just Trello and GitLab, but for this session, I want to focus on these and I will focus on the free features. So I will show you a way to do Agile, to do Scrum with the free and available features in Trello and GitLab. And actually, I already prepared this video on my Twitch channel. It's Twitch TV slash Skills for Teams. So if you want to see me live sometimes, you can also join that channel and sus subscribe. And you make sure you don't miss the videos and you always can ask direct questions. That's a big advantage of it. Well, today I set up a backlog and the backlog I set up was first in Google Sheets. Well, Google Sheets, it's an Excel-like tool and actually it is also, yeah, it's okay for backlog management. If it's not too long, if you don't have other tools, if you just have a small project, it is basically enough. What I did is, yeah, adding all items of the backlog to, um, yeah, as a summary, I don't have a description yet. And I added a status. I could have add like, uh, yeah, just the status field with selection, but I don't know how to do it. I'm not that good in Excel guy as I'm a programmer and mostly write real software and don't build Excel solutions. And I even find this is more useful as it's looking like a real Kanban board. And I have different statuses. First is backlog. It's not touched yet. Then it's planned. Actually creating a backlog. It is planned or it is in, in recording at the moment. Then I have recorded, it's already recorded, but it did, there's no place, not placed somewhere. Then we have post-production, which means like, yeah, rendering and that stuff. We have uploaded, or I could call it produced. And we have published. And this is, uh, yeah, the backlog for my new online course called, called Agile Product Development. There are also a lot of videos which are already published but i did not add the done work yet as if you start a backlog you start where you are and you just add the stuff which is yeah already still to do and that's uh, the bigger thing one necessary thing as at a backlog it should be accessible to everyone okay now that's google sheet if you are on google docs and use it with your team you can make it accessible the other one, it should be sortable. And actually you can short this, short this, short, sort this one, like uh, just moving it around. And by that you can prioritize the backlog. That's one main task of the product owner that he has to prioritize the backlog and he has a final say over it. If you watch my course, I will tell you all the stuff about product owner. Agile product development is mostly focused on yeah on the product owner you will find a discount course for the course under this video and uh, you're gonna also find an ebook it's about scrum and agile if you want to know more so we have this backlog it's sortable and actually yeah it's for a small product it's doable but not perfect then i sorted out two other solutions. And if you search today, there are plenty of product management uh, yeah, tools. There are plenty of backlog management, ticket management tools. Well, I say it fool with the tool is still a fool. So it does not matter how much, how good the tool is. You can also use this little things, post-its or sticky notes in this case as posted as a trademark of 3m i think so sticky notes can be used or magnet cards or you could even manage it on paper like this one which will, will make it more difficult to sort it but it is even possible depends on how big it is well 
I think some of the tool tools are overloaded and I found two solutions, which is are called GitLab and Trello. Actually, GitLab is uh, a tool which is mostly started for managing source code with Git. And Trello is really started as a kind of tiny board tool. It's owned by Atlassian. It's the same company as Jira, the big uh, yeah, ticket management software is. But I would prefer the small tiny solutions as yeah, more features means more complicated and less features means less complicated. And we want to start. So let us see how to set this up in GitLab. And actually I created a new project in GitLab and it comes with all the features which are GitLab style. It has merge requests, CI CD deployments, uh, a lot of DevOps and actually developer features. What's the advantage of GitLab? Well, if your developers already use GitLab for the code, for the CI CD system, which is um, yeah for deploying the code on the server and actually building and testing the code and um, other stuff. Well, you do you have the system anyway. So why not use it for manage your backlogs? Then you have all in one tool and you can um, avoid having like tool switching and you can have it at some point the people use anyhow. So what I did is created a new project for this project. It's my video course and it does not have, have code. You could put the videos in GitLab, but uh, it, it's not made for that. But I use the issues feature. And let's look what we see at the issues. Well, I imported all the stuff. You have actually an import as CSV issues uh, displayed, and I just could import it from the from the Excel. So it was not wrong uh, to start with it. Actually, if you just start with Excel list, if you don't have a tool yet, you can import that one later. Uh, there was a problem with the status, but. I could import the description and the title field. Now I have something called boards. And this one is a Kanban board. It, um, yeah, it's reproducing the things. And here I see I have planned is one creating a backlog. That's what you're actually watching. And it will be published if you are watching it. After it's planned, it is recorded at some space. Actually, maybe Recording would be uh, more, um, yeah, more correcter, and then this one would be here, but recorded is okay, so we see a clear status. And if you do it in an agile way, this works with the pull principle. So the planned one gets pulled at one time and then is recorded. And the recorded gets pulled at one time and then gets produced. It's not uh, assigned to a member. Because in Scrum, in Agile, the teams should self-select their stories, their items, which are to be done. And um, you will create a bottleneck if you assign too much ticket to one person. And with this one, I actually see that here in record it is a bottleneck and there are not enough producers, so that's a better way. Otherwise, I would maybe uh, just have a producer and see hey, he has 10 tickets assigned. Here I have more opportunities to correct it, like I can, could say more people should work in producing or we should spend more time in producing before, before we record a new video and actually finish this one. Or actually, yeah, that would be something. In Kanban, this technique is called a work in progress limit. So you put a work in progress limit in a column. For example, here should maximum be four tickets or three and then you have to produce one and publish one before you start the next one that's the principle how it works in kanban i think it's a good principle as it's avoiding like yeah the bottleneck everything is waiting in one column and not getting forward it forces you to find a solution faster there are mechanics in board which are automizing that stuff Unfortunately, GitLab does not have that feature, but 
it is, uh, yeah, you can do it manually, like having rules. If it's more than four, you will create a problem um, and you will talk about this. So um, if the tickets, if it's recorded, it will be moved to record it and then to produce and then to publish as it is on YouTube or yeah, wherever I publish it. But this will going to be out on YouTube. So if you watch it, it's a good yeah, notice to actually subscribe my channel so you can see more useful videos about Scrum, Agile and software development. So that is bought. And now we have a bit of pity, uh, which is need to do. We need to cannot use the status for these columns because the status is limited to two states, which is open and close. And that would be a bit yeah, boring on the board. So we have to use labels. And actually this one has a label with the status recorded and a label that's a video. Be careful, labels are used different in any tool. Jira is uh, using it different. It has, I think, labels and tags. Um, we see Trello understands something else. Here, the label is used for actually setting the status and you can also set another label. On the board, I have like development board now. You configure it that way that you can see here which list is used and it's already the list for one label. That's the board. It's a Kanban board in GitLab. And yeah, it's pretty good overview. I see four things to pr produce. <laughs> it's gonna be one more after this video and tomorrow I will sit here and start it. And you can also prioritize which one, why you should learn Agile or five questions, five places. I think this one is older, so I want to do it first. You can also prioritize in the backlog. That's the main task of the product owner. He can move that one around and prioritize it. And actually on the list, you can prioritize. No, you can't prioritize. But on the boards, you can move it around and prioritize it, which is a good one. So that is a bit view how to realize it. There is a possibility to realize sprints in GitLab. In Scrum sprints, you know, only one sprint is running at the time and you should be able to, um, yeah, to list the ticket to a sprint. And for this one, you can use milestones. Actually, the milestones are not built in, in yeah, for Scrum, it's a different concept from tra traditional project management, but you can, yeah, you have to abuse it so you can use it as a sprint. Well, uh, this one is uh, running. This one is starting April 17th to April 30th. This one is running from last, uh, last new moon to the next full moon. <laughs> it's actually moon sprint. And uh, yeah, you can add them and there are some more features you can use, but they are restricted to the paid version of GitLab. Now I could try it out and show you, but uh, I will just notice it. You can edit tickets and this one is, for example, you can edit one ticket at once or you can use the bulk add you and Besides milestones, now I can assign tickets to milestone. For example, I will add all the recorded videos to the sprint. Milestone sprint one. So you have to sort it and you can also add, here you have the option to add an epic and or yeah, set an epic. Epic is like a top story, a bigger story, which has other child stories. You can, of course, realize it by other opportunities like just setting a link in the story or just writing. A lot of stuff is actually done, I've seen in systems, by writing, writing stuff in the storyline. That's what, what I also did. Uh, this Epic, for example, I just write Epic 
in the storyline or you just can write another thing. Sometimes people write a component there like it's front and back end. You can always use this pattern and you will be able to found it. It's a good workaround to do anything in your yeah, GitLab, Jira or whatever you use. Just use the naming pattern inside the title. Here I used Epic. You could even do it a bit better if you just write it in this case so everybody sees it's not part of the name, it's just an like label possibility. Sometimes easiest way as some systems are configured different. You can edit a milestone, nothing is done yet. They have time tracking, but actually with Scrum, we, hopefully you don't have to time track. View date is also from old school project management. We have Vikes. This is for estimation, could be t-shirt size or story points, but also a pro feature like epics. And um, then we have conf confidentiality and lock it. GitLab is pretty simple. Let's um, yeah talk about the advantages of disadvantages again. Um, there's also, yeah, the advantage is it's close to your code and it's probably a tool you use anyway. And it's fully integrated with GitLab CI and GitLab um, yeah, version control. That's a big advantage of GitLab. Well, disadvantage in my case is for essential features, you have to um, have to pay, you have to get the pay version. If you use the pay version anyway, it does not matter. And also dis disadvantage, no real support for Scrum and actually the board feels from the usability and not perfect it's usable but uh, yeah for whom would i recommend gitlab it is yeah for developers which don't want to use an extra tool and for any open source teams which are releasing anyway on gitlab then i will recommend it so let us look at trello trello is actually started from another position and um, I was a bit disappointed because I could not uh, put my own picture in the background. But um, yeah, it comes with some nice pictures. In Trello, you go, go to the things and I just created, um, I just created an board here. You can create, here create new board. And um, yeah, actually I did the, uh, the same things as I did in, in GitLab. One thing I had to import this stuff and you can add in power ops, so-called power ops plugins, but be careful. A lot of them charge you money. So the first plugin I tried for import was $6 per month. I think $6 per month. Okay. Uh, if you pay it for something, which gives you value, but just for CSV import is pretty, uh, it's pretty too much. So uh, I found another free one. It can import CSVs, to, so I don't have to create tickets myself. And here um, it depends on columns. Basically, Trello started as a Kanban board. You could just add cards and you can use labels as, um, yeah. And this is actually your work progress. We have backlog, we have planned, we have recorded, produced, published. As I move this one here, after this video, it's recorded, then I will go to produce and then I will go to published. There, you can add the cards directly here with just a short edit. That was the old version of Trello. Now they got a lot more stuff. Let's uh, yeah. Let's first focus on the workflow. Well, the workflow at Trello is a Kanban board, and it has mechanics like I told you, like the work in progress limit. But you also should take a look on cycle time, like the time it needs from here to here. And if the cycle time is too long, the feedback is getting too slow. For example, this video I have to record. I've recorded it three weeks ago or two weeks ago, and I didn't check it up because I was out again to record new stuff, shoot new videos, and now I did not cut it. And 
I don't have the feedback of the video. It would be actually be cool to have it in a shorter way so I get faster feedback. And that is the same no matter what you produce. If it is writing software, it's not on production, it's not valid that it's running or it's not tested. If it is making contracts or selling some stuff, well, actually, maybe you have here send out offer. Well, then you have never the feedback um, that actually someone is buying. You will just have a lot of send out offers and never know if they actually succeed, if there are any issues come up. So it is a principle of agile to hold the feedback cycle short. That why you are implementing mechanisms to do so. You should limit cycle time or keep a watch on it. One trick is like, um, when we used cardboards with post-its, we were just drawing every day a little dot on it. And if something has three dots or longer as three, long three days, we thought it's a problem and we went with all together to solve it. So actually it can uncover stuff where it's not going that fast. And yeah, uh, my next task is to fix this one up to get all recorded stuff out and then I will yeah, uh, maybe implement mechanism to do that faster, maybe get better in video cutting, maybe get faster in video cutting. Well, just more trained to yeah, avoid that uh, yeah, stable here again, because in agile, in actually it's mostly Kalman mechanism, we want flow and we want to get out the things fast. It could be that it comes to such a situation and then you can uh, come over and do it again. Uh, improve it. So now let's look at the card. We have actually here a fast edit and then we can edit it and we have labels. Uh, labels. We could uh, actually assigning sprints is a bit difficult in um, yeah, in Trello, you can, can use labels to improve it. Remember in GitLab, we used labels to improve the status. Now we can use labels to improve the sprint and it's not built it in, but it's okay. You also could enter a checklist and don't mischange it with the definition of done. It's more like little subtask, break it down. This is any time you break the, the, the task down to multiple subtasks. It is useful if you wanna help yourself to actually break it down. Yeah, you could have more description and that's where your user stories come. In my course and it's an extra lection about user stories, I will form a user story here as a well, product owner if they takes too long. That is basically the basic features of Trello. Well, the good thing is I don't have it. Don't know if I have it on that mobile, but Trello has a very, very good mobile version. So if you use it for, uh, yes, <laughs> it's want. I have my correctors with me. Um, yeah, uh, Trello has a very good mobile version for self-organization. I would recommend Trello for software project products. GitLab is a bit better, so see what the features are. Trello is a software basically made for non-developers, basically made for project uh, management or task management. Management. I used it to do a lot of personal task management, actually from moving, planning my moving to planning how to style my room, actually used it for planning learning. And it's still tiny. It became a bit more overloaded over the time and you have to take care of the marketplace as everybody t tries to charge you money and now even Trello is asking you for a pro version and uh, pro money and um, whatever, but it's still a good software to manage, um, yeah, manage Kanban boards and manage smart tasks. So it depends what you should choose. At the end, we have to look. What is your favorite one? 
GitLab is what I would recommend you if you do code, if you already use GitLab or plan to use GitLab and want your task defined close to your code. Trello is more like a loose um, and lightweight, uh, yeah, lightweight tool, which can be used in any kind of task. So you can even use Trello if you have a sales team, if you have um, a team of electricians. So uh, um, yeah, I can uh, recommend Trello if you don't want a big tool, if you don't need connection to other tools, but well, there's already an API, so it is possible to build stuff, but it's not the, the big, huge solution like Jira or others. So yeah, it comes to your situation, which tool you should use. Well, I myself, I don't know what I will continue using as I introduce my tickets now to any of the systems. I might go on with um, Trello as everybody, everything is in there now. And one thing, uh, yeah, I did not show you, is um, you can also add pictures to the cards. It is looking a bit nicer, but uh, yeah, I, I have to shoot the pictures to play, bring the card nice. So at some point, I produce, I could see all videos here. So yeah, conclusion. Uh, it depends on it depends on such a such a common used word. You should use the tool which is more suitable. GitLab is also um, is recommended for me for developers using already GitLab and well, everybody who knows me knows I like GitLab. I also like Azure DevOps or GitHub, but GitLab is better for me. And yeah, Trello is a light, tiny tool, and I it has been the first on the small, um, sm small Kanban board market, and it's a still a good one. Yeah, tell me which is your favorite tool. Maybe you use something else. You will recommend another one. Just down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this review, and hope you I could help you choosing the right tool. See you next time.